In this video I want to show you a specific library for Angular which is called ngx bootstrap and this is an amazing library with lots of predefined components that are difficult to implement. And actually I am not a huge fan of using libraries, because then later you must update them, sometimes they are not doing what intended and they have lots of code inside that you don't need. And obviously it is easier to support your own code than the library. But actually inside Angular I used a lot ngx bootstrap. And actually this is a really popular library which implements a lot of components that you need in every single project. Let's have a look. As you can see here is the official website of ngx bootstrap. It doesn't have anything in common with bootstrap project or bootstrap team. And here inside documentation we can see the list of components that we have. And actually these are all components for Angular, but yes, this library is using Bootstrap as a dependency. And actually all these components you will need in almost every project. And the most popular here that I used a lot are first of all models, you really need models everywhere, pagination, dropdowns, date picker, tooltips and several others. Why it makes sense to use a library and not build all these components on our own? Actually, if we are talking for example about tooltip or model, because they are super similar, this is a container that you want to render inside your component. But actually you want to render it typically inside body. Why inside body? Because actually, if you will just render it inside your component, then you will have problems with CSS and overflow, because it can be cut by other components. If we are rendering it inside root, inside body, then we won't have such problems. And actually inside Angular it is not that easy to implement rendering of the component inside body. And you are getting this behavior out of the box together with all these components. Also these components are really nicely tested and they are working really stable. So let's try to implement in our project several components and have a look how they are working. And here I already prepared for us an empty Angular application. What we need to do here, we must jump inside console and use yarn or npm to install this package. And this is ngx bootstrap. As you can see, I don't have any errors here, but you must be cautious. If you have some older version of Angular and you can check it inside package.json, then you will get an error, because ngx bootstrap is really tied to latest versions of Angular, which actually means at the moment of this video I must use version 14, in this case ngx bootstrap won't throw any error. So our package is successfully installed, now we must import some module from ngx bootstrap. And for this I want to jump inside source app and here for example app module TS. And the first module that I want to import here is tooltip module, because this is the most popular package that you need everywhere. So let's import here tooltip module dot for root. And now here on the top we must import this tooltip module from ngx bootstrap slash tooltip. And actually this is amazing because we are getting just a dependency of tooltip, we are not getting the whole library inside. And if you are wondering why we have here for root, because actually it is possible in every single module of ngx bootstrap to provide some configuration if it is needed. So our module is successfully injected, now we can directly use it inside our app component HTML. And for this I want to create just a button. And here we can say that type is a button class is button and button primary and as you can see I am using here directly bootstrap classes and after this we are setting here tooltip and actually this tooltip must be either a text or a reference to DOM element which is a template. Let's start with just a tooltip, for example here let's write foo and close this button and now inside let's just write checking tooltip. Our basic code is completely ready, but we forgot to import bootstrap inside our project. And the easiest way to do it, we can simply jump inside source index.html and here on the top we can provide a link to bootstrap CSS. And as you see this is just a CSS, no JavaScript here, because JavaScript from the bootstrap is injected through the library itself. So let's reload this page now and check if it's working. As you can see here we have now CSS, here is our check-in tooltip and we see our foo tooltip directly on the top. And this is just with a single liner of this directive tooltip. 
And here are some important configurations for the tooltip. First of all, we want to set here a trigger, because actually by default we have a hover, and typically you want, for example, a click. In this case here we can say triggers, and this is just click, which is a string. Now here after page reload we don't see a tooltip, but if I am clicking on this button, I can see a tooltip here on the top. Another important thing that we want is appending this tooltip directly to the body and leaving everything as it is. And for this we can simply write here container equals body. And this is just a string. And after this I am reloading the page and we can directly see tooltip like previously. But now we won't have any problems with CSS or overflow hidden. Because as you can see here we have our tooltip and it was rendered not inside our component. As you can see here, it was rendered directly inside body, right at the bottom. So this tooltip is completely outside of our app root, which is really safe if we are talking about tooltips or models. And last thing about tooltips is obviously providing a template. We don't always have just a string, typically we will have a reference to our template. This is why what we can do here, we can create a tooltip. And now here afterwards we can define ng template with this reference tooltip. Now here let's close this ng template and inside we can render whatever we need, for example hello and here will be some property. And actually this property can come directly from our component. Let's say here for example username foo and now we want to render this username inside. And it will work just out of the box. So we are reloading the page here, we see our tooltip on the click, and we are rendering here tooltip. And actually as you can see, this was just a string, because we forgot to put here brackets. In this case here, now it is a variable, let's reload the page. As you can see now we are getting hello foo, which means our property is successfully working, and here we are using ng template just together with our button. As you can see this library simplifies a lot implementation of tooltips. But now let's look on models, and models you also need in almost every single project. So let's jump back inside our app module, and here we must just write model module dot for root, just like we did with tooltip module, and here now we must import our model module from ngx bootstrap slash model. So every single component is being imported from additional module. Now let's open our model, and for this we can jump directly inside our HTML, and here for example after our tooltip, let's put some spacing and render a button. And here we will have button, type button, also class, for example button and button primary, and after this we have a click event. And actually here we want to open our model. And inside our open model function that we must define, we are providing a reference to the template. Which actually means here we must close our button. And this is for example open model. And here on the bottom we are creating again ng template, but this is the template for our model. And actually here we can write for example hash model, so it will be easier to understand. Now here I want to close ng template, and now inside we must write a correct markup for our model, just like we are doing inside bootstrap. And actually I already prepared it for us, so I will just paste it here, and if you want you can take the source code from the description box below. So as you can see here we have two sections, we have first of all div class header, and after this div class body. And actually here inside model body we simply render the content of our model, we obviously can use all variables from our component, and inside our header we have first of all h4, and secondly button for close. And as you can see here we are getting model ref hide. And actually model ref we will create in a second, and inside here we just have a span to render this button. So now let's bind everything correctly inside our ts file. And actually let's jump inside app component, and here we must inject inside our constructor our model service, because this is exactly what we are using to open the model. So here I have model service, and this is bs model service. And as you can see it is auto imported from ngx bootstrap slash model. After this we must define our open model function, and actually here we know that we are getting a template, and this is a template ref, but we don't know what template is this. This is why here it is safe to use any. 
And now inside this open model, we must write this dot model ref. So we are just assigning something inside our variable. And here we are calling this model service show, and we are providing our template inside which actually means we are calling the service of this model and we are providing our template inside. And just to remind you here, inside our function, we provided a reference to model. And what is model? This is this ng template, which actually means we are providing inside the show function ng template. And actually, as you can see here, we must create this model ref. So let's write it here on the top. And this is with question mark because by default it is undefined and we are just setting it after opening a model. And this is BS model ref. So it is a reference to our model. And as you can see here, we are using this model ref after this on click, which actually means we have a property inside our class. And here we are using hide. So after we are opening model, we have a reference to this model and we can call different methods of it. For example, dot hide. Now let's check if it's working. As you can see, I don't have any errors. Let's open a browser. And here I want to click on open model. And as you can see now, here is our backdrop. We see our model. It is correctly styled. This are just styles from Bootstrap. And here we have, first of all, our headline. Here is our body. And on the right, we have our cross. And we can simply hit on the cross and our model will be directly hidden because we are just calling this reference to the model to hide it. And actually in the same way like with the tooltip, models are directly rendered inside body. So you won't have any problems with overlapping of different elements. And the last component that I want to show you here is date range picker or date picker. These are really difficult components that are not that easy to implement on your own. This is why it is so nice to get them from the library. So first of all, I want to jump outside inside our index.html because actually here we must add one more link. And as you can see, this is the CSS from NGX Bootstrap just for date picker, which actually means we have additional styling only for this specific component. Now I will jump directly inside app, app module TS, and here we must register our date picker. And it is called BS date picker module dot for root, and we must register it here on the top. So we are importing our BS date picker module from ngx bootstrap slash date picker. After this, we can directly use it. And for this, I already can paste inside our code after HR, for example, the markup for our date picker. And as you can see, I pasted quite a lot. This is row, and then we have two columns inside. And actually, we are getting bootstrap out of the box, so we have our rows and calls. But here, we are interested in this component. As you can see here, both of this component is an input. And here, we are applying BS date picker, which is a directive. And here on the bottom, we are writing exactly the same, but here is BS date range picker. This is the main difference. These are two different things. One of this is just a single date picker, and this is date range picker. And here we have BS value change, which is an emit when we are changing it from inside. So here we have on value change, and we are getting here an event. This is why we must create on value change function inside our component. So let's just write here value any, and actually you can later specify it, but I just wrote here any because we are getting here both date picker and date range picker, and here we are getting back void, and I want just to console log what we are getting back. And it is on value change, and we are getting our value. So let's check if it's working. I will reload the page, and we are getting here two date pickers. First of all, date picker, we can click here and we're getting nicely styled date picker, just like inside Bootstrap. And here we can jump between different years, select a year, then select a month, then select some date. And as you can see directly inside console, we have this change event and we're getting this date back. And exactly in the same way, we're getting this date range picker. But here we have a range between two different dates. And it is working out of the box and we are getting a change event. And in this case here we are getting an array with two dates. And actually if you are interested to know how change detection is working inside Angular, make sure to check this video also.